I um so I've been up since four. I I can tell. <laughs> no Tired. offense at all. No, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no. Tell. Not only that, but I I I've done my podcast. Mm-hmm. I made a little Instagram thingy for it. Fancy. I listened to our other podcast that we're putting up next week, mm-hmm. and. I did my physical therapy exercises. I went to the gym. I did all of these things. And so after this, I'm going to go take a nap because I'm tired. And (laughs) the gym was a bold choice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Blair. And I'm Kirsten. And we are... Mediocre, mediocre content. content and i am super excited about this episode i can't even lie <laughs> it's gonna be a whale of a time <laughs> she said it she said it i did i did uh, will we be teaching you how to speak whale the answer is no only ellen degeneres as dory can do that <laughs> these are the rules um, those are the rules i don't make them i just that's abide true. by them yes these are facts In any functioning society you have to have rules and that's one of them so. <laughs> I wish I could speak whale. I'm. Cool. I feel like I. That's too much power. <laughs> you think it's too much power? What, I think, yeah, what would you do with like, it? If you could communicate with all uh, the whales, Jinx, I swear. Um, <laughs> he's also having a whale of a time. He's, he really is. He's like rubbing his head up against my microphone. As so usual. So if I, if I, you know, sporadically um, cut out. <laughs> cut out that is that's why hi i know you want to just like butt your head against everything that's nice but i need you to calm down gotta get his mouth on it <laughs> he just likes to hit his head against stuff i don't know what to it's tell not you. even stream time it might even be brain damage who knows Oof. <laughs> drain damage <laughs> sometimes no but sometimes he like hits his himself his head against a wall just like randomly and i hear it and it, Ouch. Hurts. it sounds like it hurts really bad <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing man what are uh, you doing that reminds me when we lived in florida we had like laminate floors and lynx has super fluffy feet and he would try to run around the house and he would like tokyo drift around the corner and hit, the, <laughs> hit like the doorway like the door frame and i'm like oh <laughs> They do that. They do that. They get the zoomies and then (laughs) then (laughs) there's zero traction. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's the best. It really is. I feel so terrible, but they're having a blast. So what are you gonna do? Yeah. Gotta be in their bonnet, you know? They do. Do it. All right. What were we talking about before that? (laughs) Whales. Um, (laughs) Whales. So yes, we will be speaking of whales. Um and I'm excited because I think whales are like one of the most fascinating parts of the sea that we know of so far. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so basically, I'm just going to disclaim and then I'll let you do the good news and then we'll get on to the whales. Woo. Um, so obviously we're not experts on anything. We're definitely not experts on whales. Um, <laughs> I did go see whales uh, yeah. in a whale watching expedition. So fun. But I, that does not make me an expert, believe it or not. <laughs> Weird. Um, but if you want to hear about whales and if you have anything to contribute to the conversation about whales, please continue listening. Mm-hmm. But just know that we don't know everything about whales. Slash, it, we would be here for like three hours. Oh, as my gosh. Per <laughs> usual. So. Was, yeah. If we didn't skim through a lot of this stuff, we would literally have weeks worth of episodes. <laughs> yeah. I had to cut down the evolution stuff and y'all y'all are going to be like, "Oh my god, this is taking forever. Why is she still talking about evolution?" <laughs> the answer is because this is the short version. <laughs> the, this is abbreviated even. Yeah. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Anyway, go for it. Okay. What's, so what's good? I am also going to be talking a little bit about uh, species, which is exciting, but these are land species and it's a new one, which is super exciting. So in India's remote Western gates, a gorgeous blue and yellow gecko species has been named in honor of Vincent van Gogh, super cool, whose painting Starry Night was the first thing that entered Ishan Agarwal's mind when he saw it. 
found during one of the many expeditions into these underdeveloped and underexplored mountains running parallel to India's western coastline, it enriches both the eyes and the scientific literature. These articles are always so, like, uh, ag aggressively floofy. floofy. Yeah. yeah. Um, belonging to the genus Na Nemapsis, that's what I'm going to go with. Mm -hmm. It is one of the 2,300 members worldwide and over 100 in India alone. Not so long ago, though, there were only a few dozen. Um, this a, a genus was found during, or this species, I'm sorry, was found during one such exploration after the flash of indigo and mustard yellow, which caught a garwal's eye. It looked similar to another gecko of the same genus, which was C. galaxia. Um, however, during the lab work, it, he was suspicious that it might be a completely new species, and it sounds like it was. It, it and a second closely related species are described for the first time in a study that was published in the Natural Zoo Keys, found in the, oh my goodness, this is a really aggressive word, I apologize, I'm going to butcher the crap out of it, but found in the Stravillip, Prather Megamali Tiger Reserve. You did great. I, 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 you did the best. Yes, I, I did. Okay. There are um, a lot of consonants there. A lot. Um, but Agarol suspects that this gecko is receiving much greater protection than many of India's native reptiles because of its location under this kind of umbrella of the tiger region. Um, umbrella conservation strategies allow naturalists to advocate for the conservation of a single species who need, whose needs of territory, prey species, and protection are largest, and ipso facto helps conserve dozens or even hundreds of other species that share that territory. Don't ask me what that means. I don't know. Okay. And in this case, protecting tigers means also protecting the geckos is what you need to know. And he says that these new techniques for studying DNA will also allow much greater specificity in describing species and that this particular genus is extremely diverse. So super cool to have an entirely new species of anything at this rate. Truly. Um, and even cooler that it's kind of protected because of tigers of all things. Super cool. Neat. Different. Okay. So the next is space news, because why not? Space. <laughs> space. Uh, the ocean is kind of like our space you know, on the planet, I would say. Right. So the, <clears throat> then the conspiracy theory holds true mm -hmm. that they found something underneath <laughs> the water. Yes. And they were like, nope. And then <laughs> they were like, we need to get off this planet ASAP. Somehow space was safer. Yeah. So weird. Anyway. Even though we can't breathe. So like. <laughs> in either, I would like to say, <laughs> in either location. Really? That is true. You're right. Yeah, my gills have since gone away. It's been a couple millennia, I think. Um. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, actually, you had gills when you were <laughs> when you were being born. I did. That's fair. Did. In fairness, so it was like thirty years ago. You know, I didn't really need my gills after a while. Well, I could get rid of these. I don't need them anyway. So space. A spacecraft is being built that could orbit the Earth and aid other ships that need a refuel, which will extend their missions. The Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio, Texas, will build and test a small demonstration spacecraft as part of a $25.5 million space mobility and logistics project, which is funded by the U.S. Space Force. Hashtag Space Force. Um... <laughs> Shout, Force? shout out to Space Force. <laughs> Live long and prosper, babes. Led, led by prime contractor Astroscale, which is a really cool name. The spacecraft called the Astroscale Prototype Servicer for Refueling, which is thankfully abbreviated as APS-R, will carry hydrazine propellant from a depot, also in orbit, to spacecrafts who are running low on fuel. So it's a space gas station. <laughs> Cute. Very modern. This will be scheduled to launch. Does it have snacks? It should have snacks. <laughs> Got any uh, Diet Cokes in there? Right. <laughs> I know. I gotta have snacks for the space the... trip. <laughs> I was gonna say road trip, <laughs> the but there's road? literally zero gotta, roads there. Gotta have, gotta have snacks for the air. <laughs> for the air trip. <laughs> for the black there. Uh, for the vacuum. <laughs> for the vacuum. <laughs> vacuum snacks oh my goodness <laughs> that would be an amazing somebody make that happen please right right 
Can you imagine just like orbiting around the earth and all of a sudden there's just like this cashier just floating? Is that all you need? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. One, one icy, please. Right. Uh, where was I? Anyway, scheduled to be launched ready by 2026. The apps are can service any spacecraft fitted with a compatible refueling port. Uh, quote, Running low on fuel is a common issue for spacecraft in Earth orbit. When they have extended all their fuel, their mission ends, even though the vehicle may be in otherwise excellent health. And that was a quote, quote by staff engineer Steve Thompson. Um, by having this refueling vehicle, it will not only extend their missions, um, they can also get additional lifetime out of the spacecraft that's already in orbit. So it's not going through like ascent and descent through the atmosphere even though they're obviously made to do that but it does and create wear and tear a, that takes a lot of energy too, it does and you know it does so you're already out there if we can make it easier to stay out there and complete the mission that's the best um the best move so the apps are will operate in geostationary orbit around the earth meaning it will follow a circular orbit in sync with the earth's rotational period of 24 hours and over the next 16 months it will construct uh the host vehicle uh, which will be pretty small apparently in the institute's new processing facility the maximum dimensions are 24 by 28 by 45 inches when stowed for launch, and the total vehicle launch mass will weigh just at around 437 pounds, including the propellant. And when the host spacecraft is complete, they will integrate the Astro scale supplied payload and, of course, perform system level environmental testing to prepare for actual launch. So lots to do, um, but this is great news because we don't we're still obviously exploring space but it's really difficult like i said for wear and tear of materials but also like longevity of the actual mission yeah um to have to you know keep coming back and forth so this will be great they might even be able to extend uh the range at which these crafts can go uh so good good news for exploration in space i like it yeah and now i suppose we'll be talking about a different level of space <laughs> we're going to be talking about creature a creature that lives in the ocean we're not talking about space space it's ocean not, no <laughs> no oh uh, have you ever seen those like uh like the constellations that like have the whale or whatever yes i picture? have it's so stinking mm -hmm. cute it is anyway. cute it is um okay so we're going to be talking about whales which are part of what are called um cetaceans is that what is that how you would pronounce mm -hmm. that yeah okay c-e-t-a-c-e-a-n-s which includes the whales dolphins and porpoises Porpoise. which are so cute <laughs> they are love cute. a good porpoise <laughs> um, what porpoise do they serve <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'm done with you man <laughs> that's fair i'll mute myself it's fine <laughs> Um, okay, so common names would include whales. Cetacea is the scientific name. They are of the diet carnivorous, um, <laughs> believe it or not. Woo. And lifespan, which I think is funny, is unknown. <laughs> they just live forever They're like tortoises. <laughs> right. Um, and I think you know there's a variety of reasons we don't know i mean a lot I, I don't think that goes for all species but i'm right. pretty sure like for the larger ones they go pretty deep so we don't always know like where they're at mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um they can be as little as nine feet up to 98 feet long Jeez. which is a lot and then <laughs> they can weigh <laughs> marginally uh, the smallest is 500 pounds to 200 tons oh <sighs> yeah that's a lot that kind of makes it made me have like a little shiver down my spine <laughs> needless to say whales mm. are the largest animals on earth <laughs> they live in every ocean that we have um the massive mammals range from 600 pound dwarf sperm whales to the colossal blue whale which is what everyone thinks of when i think people would probably think of two different types probably the blue mm. whale which mm -hmm. is like the biggest one mm -hmm. or the humpback whale, which humpback is the one that goes, whales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that like goes out of the water 
and does the fun little breach situation. It is fun. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it in real life before. We're it is so fancy. wild. I bet it is. Um, and so the blue whale can weigh up to 200 tons and stretch up to 100 feet long, which for reference is as long as a professional basketball court. Whew. Yeah. A little unsettling. Um, but it's fine because Caitlin Gl- Clark can still make the shot. It'll be okay <laughs> for her. Uh, just throw <laughs> that in there. It's okay because she has girl power. <laughs> she does. Um, I I literally knew nothing about basketball at all until this <laughs> women's college season. I think that's about, a fair start. I yeah, I'm down. I like think we need to do like women's sports at some point. We do. Yeah, like the National Women's Hockey mm-hmm. League, need to do that. Mm-hmm. Women's basketball, need to do that. Softball, mm-hmm. oh my gracious, we need to do mm-hmm. that. Anyway, I digress. All right. Yes, well, we'll get there. We we'll will. get there. Yeah. Not us coming up with other podcasts <laughs> while we're doing the podcast. This happens all the time now. <laughs> this happens every year now. <laughs> every year. I love it. Um, no, but I did. I was listening to a previous recording of a different podcast, and we did mention some, and I put them on the sheet. Oh, so because <laughs> we like forget that we, we do. It. No, that's so. fair. Which ones did we? T- which ones? The did Hello talk- Kitty one will oh, be. Oh yes, now on there. So nice. That'll be good. That's a great one. <laughs> All right, Kirsten. So we're going to talk about briefly. We're going to talk about whale calls. Oh, I'm so. I'm so so ready. humpback whales are the ones that make the most noise. Okay. Well, mm. <laughs> have they, you talked to so them personally about this? They're the ones that you can like hear from the surface, I should mm, say. Okay. So they produce, quote, otherworldly vocalizations that can be heard for miles underwater. The song's complex combinations of moans, howls, and cries that can that can continue for hours are produced when whales push air around in their heads me after mexican night (laughs) (laughs) just a lot of moans howls and cries (laughs) i'm basically a whale you're basically (laughs) in a cute way well (laughs) mine is also amplified i'm sure you can hear it statewide (laughs) oh god Okay, so they push the air around and they amplify the sound through a blob of fat that perches on the top of their jaw, That's so which is wild. It is wild. Um, it's thought that whales communicate through the calls, which researchers believe can be heard for thousands of miles. Now, this is not the only whale that makes noises and vocalizes. Beluga whales are also known for being particularly chatty. And cute. Um and then but i'm not that's that's your that's your whale call situation (laughs) but the ones that dory was referencing in um uh finding nemo that's the Mm -hmm. movie got it um (laughs) were humpback whale calls and they were almost consumed by a humpback whale so it makes very good sense makes Mm -hmm. very good sense Mm -hmm. yeah so anyway um Threats to the whale population, um, <clears throat> stark declines from hunting have largely stopped, mm. but we do have a lot of traffic in the oceans, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. So things like ships and propellers on ships and net entanglements can be a problem. Um, sonar has been developed to like help avoid this, mm-hmm. obviously. Uh, but it's not a perfect system. Uh, and sometimes the whales get curious. I don't know. Doesn't so didn't uh, tell me if I made this up. Didn't they say that sonar may also like create problems with their communication as well? I don't know. Uh, I didn't find anything in this particular uh, yeah, yeah. research session about it. Um, but I yeah, I don't I don't know anything about that, to be honest. Interesting. Yeah. I'd be interested to know. Yeah, but I mean, I would rather use sonar to. Oh yeah. To like, 
if we can prevent avoid like, running into the whale, whale as opposed to like <laughs> it's fine if you can't talk to your girl like we'll move it's oh fine you know what i mean <laughs> you're being so dramatic <laughs> right. oh my god That's okay great. so now we're going to talk about the evolution of whales and it's it's going to be interesting let me so <laughs> okay. believe it or not believe it or not whales mm -hmm. used to walk on land Everybody take a moment and breathe that in. This really makes me upset. <laughs> Get off my land. <laughs> yeah. So um because whales are mammals, mm -hmm. logically, right. they had to be on land at some point. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, about 375 million years ago, the first tetrapods, which are, for those who don't know, vertebrates with arms and legs pushed themselves out of the swamps and began to live on land. So if you were in AP biology in the years <laughs> of 2010 to 2012, you might have read the book, Your Inner Fish, where they illustrate this very, very, very vividly about um, how- With extreme detail. To, with extreme detail. The whole book is about it, where they talk about the transition from like, things that live in the water to things that live on land. Okay. Hmm. It's actually a really good book. It's very well written. It mm -hmm. kept my mind occupied as an 18 year old, which, you know, perfect, difficult to do. Agreed. All right. Um, <clears throat> this major evolutionary transition set the stage for all subsequent groups of land dwelling vertebrates, including a diverse lineage called synapsids, which originated about 306 million years ago. Through the though these creatures, such as the Demetrodon, um, looked like reptiles, they were actually the archaic precursors of mammals. Hmm. So, um, and they look really weird. Like the pictures <laughs> that were in this article. Um, so think about a um kimono dragon, like mm -hmm. the dra like the ones that fall from the trees um in Florida. Iguanas. Iguanas. Sorry. I mean, sorry. if a Komodo dragon fell on my head in Florida, I would be just as scared. I'm going to be very honest with you. <laughs> so no, think about the big iguanas yeah. that are in Florida. I get, I don't like reptiles. Anyway, um, I can tell. They, <laughs> um, think about one of those and how they looked, but also fluffy. Okay? A fluffy iguana? Yeah. Fancy. With like, with like furs. Oh my. Oh, she is draped in furs. Fur, yeah. <laughs> draped in a leopard mink. <laughs> That'd be perfect. So anyway, think, yeah. Anyway, uh, by the time the first mammals evolved 200 million years ago, however, dinosaurs were the dominant vertebrates, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, Jurassic Park. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> mammals diversified in the shadow of the great archos archosaurs, and they remained fairly small and secretive until the non avian dinosaurs were wiped out by a mass extinction 65 million years ago. This global catastrophe cleared the way for a major radiation of mammals. It was only about 10 million years after this extinction and more than 250 million years since the earliest tetrapods crawled out onto land that the first whales evolved. <clears throat> These earliest cetaceans were not like the whales that we know and love today. And only recently have paleontologists been able to recognize them. So it took us and you'll be shocked. It, it took us a hell of a long time mm -hmm. to like just to figure out the timeline from mm, whales being on land to back in the water. So mm -hmm. um, for more than a century, our knowledge of whale fossil record was so sparse uh, that we did not know what whale in ancestors looked like. Um, now the tide has turned. The turns have tabled. The turns have tabled. <laughs> uh, in the space of just three decades, a flood of new fossils have filled in the gaps in our knowledge um, to turn the origin of whales into one of the best documented examples of large scale evolutionary change in the fossil record. These ancestral creatures were stranger than anyone ever expected. There was no straight line uh, march of terrestrial mammals leading up to fully aquatic whales, but, and 
evolutionary riot of amphibious cetaceans that walked and swarm along rivers, estuaries, and coasts of the prehistoric Asia. Um, as strange as modern whales are, sorry, guys, jinx is in the way. <laughs> Cat um, impeding. <laughs> their fossil predecessors were even stranger. So, Pioneers who cleared land in Alabama and Arkansas frequently found enormous round bones and didn't <clears throat> tell anyone. Some settlers <laughs> used them as fireplace fireplace hearths. Others <laughs> propped them up with uh, propped up fences with the bones or used them as cornerstones. Why are humans so weird? <laughs> I'm just gonna put this carcass pillows. next to the fireplace. Yeah. I know. The bones are so numerous that in some fields they were destroyed because they interfered with cultivating land. Humans. <laughs> we're dumb. In 1832, a hill collapsed. Weird way of saying landslide. In, <laughs> but but, yeah. The hill collapsed on the Ar <laughs> on Arkansas property of Judge H. Bry and exposed a long sequence of 28 uh, circular bones. He thought that they might uh, be of scientific interest and sent a package to the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia. No one quite knew what to make of them. Some of the sediment attached to the bone contained small shells and showed that a large creature that had once lived in an ancient sea, but little more could be said with any certainty. Highly so. recommend people look up like where these ancient oceans were and how they receded mm -hmm. and things like that because even in like the american midwest that's where they think a lot of like the grand canyon and stuff like that kind of the mountains and things were formed because there's erosion is really what it amounted to anyway fun you're facts. so right no you're so right um bry's donation was soon matched and exceeded by that of judge john cray from alabama um he found vertebrae and other fragments while uh you know blowing up his property <laughs> so random <laughs> and also sent off a few samples to the philadelphia society richard harland reviewed the fossils which were unlike any he had seen before he asked for more bones and cray soon sent parts of the skull jaw jaw limbs ribs and backbone to the uh, of the enigmatic creature Given that both Cray and Bry said that they had seen intact vertebral columns in excess of 100 feet in length, the living creature must have been one of the largest vertebrates to have ever lived. Furthermore, Harlan thought that the bones were most similar to those of extinct marine reptiles, such as the long-necked Plesiosaurus mm -hmm. and streamlined Ithiosaurus, um, he <clears throat> tentatively assigned it the name of Basiosaurus. Um, he he wasn't certain though. Mm -hmm. The jaw contained teeth that were a different size and shape, um, so it didn't match. We weren't matching. Mm -hmm. We didn't mm -hmm. know what this was. We're working on it. We're trying to figure <laughs> it out. We're working. On it. Um, Harlan traveled to London in 1893 or 1839, sorry, uh, to present the Basiosaurus, um, to some of the leading paleontologists and anatomists of the day. Richard Owen, a rising star in the academic community, carefully scrutinized every bone and he even received permission to slice into the teeth to study the microscopic structure. Hmm. Um, his attention to such tiny details often... Um, ultimately settled the identification of the sea monster um, because obviously they thought it was a sea monster at this point. What else um, could it be? <laughs> it's a Leopleurodon. <laughs> oh. It's a, yes! it's a Leopleurodon, Charlie. Oh, God. What a throwback. We just dated ourselves. <laughs> I, well, I, I'm a nice date. I, I wouldn't mind taking me on a date or two. <laughs> Carl, you can't kill people. <laughs> oh, 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 I, I did I not know that. Know that. <laughs> hands, I'm hungry for hands. <laughs> my tummy has the rumblies that only, only hands, hands can, can satisfy. satisfy. <laughs> Why do oh, we know this still? It's disgusting. It's wild. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so l long and short of it, Charles Darwin came out with his theory not short after all this was happening 
And um, <clears throat> the fossil record was so sparse that no definite determination could be made, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and Charles Darwin speculated about how natural selection might be, might create a whale-like creature over time. So his theory was in North America, the black bear was seen by Hearn swimming uh, Samuel Hearn, uh, which was an, ex he was an explorer, I mm -hmm. guess, um, mm -hmm. swimming for several hours with, with his mouth wide open. Oh, <laughs> um, thus catching like a whale insects in the water. Right. So sure. Darwin's theory was that bears are the evolutionary product of large whales in some way. Okay. Okay. Actually, no, I take that back. It, that's what it came off as, I guess I should say. So, yeah. like, Darwin was widely ridiculed for this particular uh, theory, I guess, yeah. which yeah. he was widely ridic ridiculed for a lot, a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he was on something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so his critics took it to mean that he was proposing that bears were direct ancestors of whales, which is not true. Darwin, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? Darwin, um ended up modifying the passage um <clears throat> and went with the basiosaurus mm -hmm, mm -hmm. theory right so we're still unknown not quite sure um let me see so th Hus huxley in 1871 darwin asked whether um whether the ancient whale might represent a transitional form and Huxley replied that there could be little doubt that the Basiosaurus um, provided clues as to the ancestry of whales. Huxley thought that the Basiosaurus at least represented the type of animal that linked whales to their terrestrial ancestors. If this was true, then it seemed probable that whales had evolved from some sort of terrestrial carnivorous mammal. Other extinct whales um, another extinct whale called the squalodon, a fossil dolphin with a wicked smile and full of triangular teeth. I think you guys all know which one that is. Horrifying. Um, similarly hinted that whales had evolved from meat eating ancestors. Um, so while all this was going on, scientists speculated about what the ancestors of whales might have been like. Mm -hmm. The anatomist William Henry Flower um, pointed out that seals and sea lions use their limbs to propel themselves through the water while whales um, lost their hind limbs and swam by oscillations of their tail. He could not imagine that early cetaceans used their limbs to swim and switched to tail only propulsion at some later point. Okay. Mm -hmm. then they were, they went over like they were like well otters and beavers mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. were a better better alternative for models of the earliest terrestrial ancestors of whales but still like it's yeah. hard to make the connections right mm -hmm. so basically everyone's like what do we do we have no idea what's happening yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> we may conclude by picturing ourselves some primitive generalized marsh haunting animals with scanty covering of hair like a modern hippopotamus, right? Mm -hmm. um, but with broad swimming tails and short limbs. Um, omnivorous in their mode of feeding, probably combining water plants with mussels, worms, and freshwater crustaceans, uh, gradually becoming more and more adapted to fill the void. Um But mm -hmm. by the turn of the 20th century, oldest fossil whales were still represented by the Basiosaurus and similar forms like the Derudon and Proto Proto Pro Protocetus. Yeah, that's what I would say. And all of their and all of which were fully aquatic. 
mm-hmm. there were no fossils to bridge the gap from land to sea, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, everyone, all the smart people in the world were like, we don't know what to do. We need more evidence. What's going to happen? What's a we whale? don't know. <laughs> They were and not so, having a whale of a time. <laughs> no. And so for decades, from at least the 1890s onward, yeah. they were like, I don't know. <laughs> they, all of them just shrugged their shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> and that's science, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, pretty accurate. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> so in the second half, we're going to discuss this. We are going to talk about the discovery that was able to finally bridge the gap and confirm that whales did were once land roving and now they are sea roving. I would so. argue that is also science. Like, we're going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Determination <true>. is key. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So anyway, uh, we're going to take a little break and we'll come back in a minute. Hi, Kirsten. Hi, Blair. Do you have cats? Why, yes, I do. Then you should play mediocre content for your cats. And why is that? Because it has been shown to soothe cats and reduce hairballs. Really? Yes. In fact, I play mediocre content for my cats, too. Mediocre content is for all pets. That's so great to know. I will play mediocre content for my cats right now. You should. Everyone should listen to mediocre content with their pets today. Mediocre content has not been shown to reduce hairballs or soothe any animals of any species. In fact, it's very probable to create the exact opposite effect. Please use caution while exposing your furry friends to mediocre content. It's also pretty dodgy for humans to listen at your own risk. Mediocre content is not responsible for any negative effects of podcast listening. Well, welcome back. Get out of here. <laughs> it boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I love episodes like this. We could just yeah, all the puns. Just... <laughs> I think it's like the afternoon and we're both just like that. <laughs> That's what happens, you know? It... Look, again, we say this a lot. If you haven't come here for mediocre content, are you even in the right place? <laughs> You're not. Spoiler alert. Mm. Okay. So I know you all have been waiting with bated breath to figure out exactly what bridged the gap and made the fossil record complete mm-hmm. for whales and i'm here to tell you that a startling discovery was made mm. in the arid sands of pakistan announced by the university of michigan paleontologist philip gingrich and donald russell in 1981 uh finally delivered the transitional form scientists had been hoping for the gasp they gusped <laughs> The gasp they gust. Mm-hmm. Uh, in freshwater sediments dating back to around 53 million years ago, the researchers recovered the fossils of an, um, an animal that they called pa- Paquitas uh, inacus. Um, little more than the back of the animal's skull had been recovered, but it possessed a feature that unmistakably is connected to the cetacean family. Now, like many mammals, cetaceans have ear bones enclosed in a dome of bone on the underside of their skulls called the auditory bulla. You have one. I have one. We all have one. Don't look at my bulla, man. Uh, Where whales differ is that the margin of the dome closest to the midline of the skull called the involcrum is extremely thick, dense, and highly mineralized. This condition is called uh, pachyosteosclerosis. You nailed that. Good job. Good job. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) You nailed it. And whales are the only mammals known to have such heavily thickened involcrum. Uh, They special like that. (laughs) Um, And of course, the discovery had this. So therefore, yeah, it is a whale or an early version of a whale. Nice. Um, <clears throat> even better, two jaw fragments showed that the teeth of the, uh, Pachytus were very similar to those of Meso- Mesonychids. Hmm. Um, it appeared that Van Valen had been right and which is one of the early researcher guys. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and Pategus was just one of the uh, sort of marsh dwelling creature he had envisioned. The fact that it was found in a freshwater deposit and not and did not have specializations of the inner ear for underwater hearing showed that it was still in the very er early in the aquatic transition. And Gingrich and Russell thought of. P I've said it like three times already and <laughs> it still bothers me. <laughs> Pacacetus <laughs> um, as a, quote, amphibious intermediate stage in the transition of whales from land to sea. So it was basically a whale frog is what I'm going to go for. <laughs> Can you imagine? That thing is crazy looking in uh -huh. your brain. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, it didn't look like a frog, though, guys. So don't. You know. <laughs> Ribbit. Can oh. you hear that dog just, like, dog? going ham outside? There's a dog. Get, excuse You don't even live here. Shh. <laughs> Hold on. I'll, I need to close my window. <laughs> Sir. Um... Okay, so they added the caveat that postcranial remains, uh, bo bones other than the skull, uh, will provide the best test of this hypothesis. The scientists had every reason to be cautious, but the fact that a traditional whale had been found was so stupendous that full body reconstruction of the Pacetus was... Um, Pachycetus uh, appeared in books, magazines, and on television. It was presented as a stumpy legged <laughs> seal like creature. It's so uh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> an animal caught between worlds, poor thing. <laughs> it was not living its best life. <laughs> no. So throughout the 1990s, the skeletons of more or less aquatically adapted ancient whales uh, were discovered at a dizzying pace. With this new context, the stubby seal-like form of Pachycetus, uh, depicted in so many places, began to make less and less sense. Then, in 2001, J.G.M. Thwaisen uh, <laughs> and colleagues described the long-sought skeleton, as opposed to just the skull, of Pachycetus. Um, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, never, okay. <laughs> never mind. Um, it was a wolf like animal, not the slick steel like animal that they had originally envisioned. So, the full skeleton, I guess, mm -hmm. was not yeah. took a while for them to like fully excavate, and it didn't look that they thought like they thought it looked. Um, together with other recently discovered genera like the Himaladius and M. Bulocetus, uh, Remington Ocetus, uh, and a bunch of other ones that I'm not going to pronounce. There's so many. It fits snugly within a collection of Archaeoses? basically, yeah. Ar yeah. So basically, um, skeletons yeah. of of, whales. of old whales, yeah. yeah, that exquisitely document a evolutionary radiation of early whales. Perfect, though not a series of direct ancestors and descendants each genus represents a particular stage of whale evolution together they illustrate how the transition took place it's kind of cool to see that in other animals too mm -hmm. like how they acquired different attributes that set them aside from their ancestors but still allowed them to be within the same lineage right of ancestors it's very cool the very cool yeah, yeah. But I also think it's wild to think that over time, animals were just like, yep, I'm going to be aquatic now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, like, <laughs> obviously, you know, you don't have like a wolf going, yeah, I think I'd rather have gills. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess in our lifetime, we would not be able to see that transition, but it just, right. it's so wild to know that that happened. Also, I feel like I need to state this as a previous biology student. Yes, ma'am. Just very briefly, because I don't like to assume anything. It is not, animals are not actively choosing these. Th I would just like to be very, right. like, it right. is literally a natural selection. There are weird adaptations that occur or mutations that occur. And if you look at the history of animals, 
It's essentially the whole, the strongest will survive. No, that's pretty accurate. And those attributes that allowed it to survive just become ingrained in their lineage. Right. So like ultimately what happened with the whales Correct. is like their environment became too toxic. And one whale was like, oh, well, I have this cool ability to like <clears throat> do something advantageous in right. this water climate. And right. then I'm going to reproduce and pass it on to my kids. That's what happened. And sometimes but, it works the opposite is the yeah, thing. Like it's not yeah. always like an advantageous thing. But in cases like this, it just so happened by pure luck of mutation and weirdness alone that it happened. So I just want to be yeah. very clear <laughs> about that. Yeah, environmental stressors yes. and genetics. Indeed. Science rules. <laughs> Science. All right. Um. And if you're in the comments talking about how evolution isn't real, you can move right on along. <laughs> I mean, feel free to comment it, but uh, just be very clear. We have no room for you here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. All right. So now we're going to talk about the types of whales. And there are 80 types of whales. But So we're not going to talk about all 80 of them because Aww. then we'd be here for another hour and a half. And I don't want to do that. That's fair. So, And I'm sure neither do you. So here we are. Um, there are two main types of whales, which are the ones that have teeth and the ones that have the little bristlies, <laughs> and, uh, which are called baleen. And no, they're called the little bristlies. <laughs> I thought that's a better term. <laughs> Science. Um, and if, again, I'm going to make a Finding Nemo reference because that's where I get all of my marine life uh, information. Uh, the, the teeth that you see in the humpback whale that they are swallowed by, mm -hmm. um, the one that Marlin is like hitting against, those are the baleen teeth. Those are mm -hmm. not, the regular teeth are more like what you think of as teeth. Right. Okay. So yeah. Um, and it's also a fact that toothed whales eat like bigger things. So like squids, fish, and like seals and stuff. Um, whales with the baleen usually go for smaller things like krill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, I just want to say up front that the narwhal horn, because we are, there is a type of whale, mm -hmm. um, is a large tooth and do with that information what you will. <laughs> I think that it's super cool. And I still think it's a unicorn horn because that's what I choose to believe. <laughs> the thing you should really, we should do an episode on narwhals or maybe like a mini something on narwhals. Because they can actually really injure themselves with this thing. And it's very uh -huh. interesting to read about. So anyway. I think that like ancient cultures, like the Vikings, mm -hmm. um, chopped off the tooth hmm. and then sold it to people as a unicorn horn. And ah, that's why people think unicorns are real. That, that's yeah. just my like conspiracy theory. I don't know, obviously. Mm -hmm. I, that's, that's my thought. That's a cool theory. I haven't thought about yeah. that. That makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah. And also the baleen teeth whales are usually bigger, right? So yeah, you got your yeah. humpback whale, your blue whale. Ironically. Et yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Um, okay. <clears throat> so some of my favorite types of whales, we're going to start off with the beluga whale, <laughs> okay. which I think is so cute. They I love cute. the beluga whales. Uh, they are known for their white color and range of vocal sounds. They're very chatty. Um, they are known as the quote canary of the sea. Um, and they are very social animals, uh, forming groups to hunt, migrate and interact with each other. So they love to be around when I was at the Georgia aquarium, they had two beluga, two or three beluga whales, one of which was on a diet because it was really <laughs> fat. <laughs> it oh. had like little ripples of like, Oh tissue God. all over the place it was so cute though that is super cute actually yeah and there's also that gif of that poor little child standing in front of the yes. beluga whale <laughs> and the so beluga cute. whale scares the crap out of her and it's so funny it's adorable okay my i also like and this is in no particular order by the way I like, <laughs> fair enough i'm an equal opportunity whale person okay um blue whales 
are the largest animals to ever live on the planet. And they eat the smallest animals on the planet, which is weird. Not mm-hmm. really the smallest animals, but like krill are very small. Yes. Anyway, um, blue whales are found in uh, all ocean basins except for the Arctic Ocean. Um, there are five currently recognized subspecies of blue whale, which I did not look up. And I'm now realizing I might I, I probably should have. That's a, I, um, I got you. <laughs> OK, thank you so much. We have the bowhead whales. Um, which are one of the few whale species that reside almost exclusively in the Arctic and the subarctic waters, experiencing seasonal ice coverage, uh, primarily between 60 and 75 north latitude. Hmm. So all of uh of all the large whales, the bowhead is the most adapted to the icy water. And it's called the bowhead because <laughs> It's like very rounded. It's not pointy like a blue whale. Mm-hmm. Um, their head is like super round. Nice. It looks cool. <clears throat> All right. So now we have false killer whales, not to be confused with killer whales, which are actually orcas. All right. <laughs> They're impersonators. <laughs> they are social. Impasta. Social animals found globally in all tropical and subtropical ocean basins and generally in the deep offshore waters. Uh, The false killer whale's entire body is black or dark gray. And although lighter areas may occur uh, on its underside um, between the flippers and stuff, which is probably why people are like, oh, they look like killer whales, but they're not. Right. Right. Also, I have the subspecies. Yes. All right. So the northern blue whale, Mm -hmm. the Antarctic blue whale, Mm -hmm. the northern Indian Ocean blue whale. That's just locational, by the way. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. But then there's also the pygmy blue whale and the Chilean blue whale, which, yeah. So it's all like regional and they might might just be that they have minor differences that keep them as a blue whale but because of where they are like we talked about they Mm -hmm. probably have specific adaptations for whatever area they're found in correct yeah i like it yeah humpback whales (laughs) yeah next um they're a favorite of whale watchers can't confirm uh (laughs) they are often active jumping out of the water and slapping the surface with their pectoral (laughs) fins or tails we saw a mom a humpback whale and a little baby which was actually very large but that's (laughs) neither here nor there sweet little baby (laughs) yeah and they they do the little breach thing um to get their foods so smart yep um and now we have the killer whale which is more uh accurately named the orca Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is the ocean's top predator and i know this because i saw a video the other day (laughs) of a great white shark getting absolutely (laughs) demolished (laughs) by an orca and (sighs) it was bad wow the 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 great white shark didn't even see it coming it like postured (laughs) and then it was like out oh my god it was not good oh you it was really bad please do not (laughs) (laughs) then i will decline it's like an aerial view so you see the great white shark go and then it's like just minding its business man (laughs) oh my god (laughs) we need to do a shark episode (laughs) redeem them <laughs> oh my god it's awful no orcas Ooh. are the real sharks they are i would agree they are horrifying I did also see when we went whale watching i did see um a family of orcas mm-hmm. the dad orca had a dorsal fin that was six feet tall holy crap it was giant Jacked. and there's been like sightings in the monterey bay this year of like 30 to 40 killer whales like all in one big pack I have also heard, and this might just be the sharks stirring conspiracy theories about orcas, so I don't mm-hmm. know, maybe check your resources, but sure. I have also heard that orcas will play with their food. Oh, a thousand and like, <laughs> and like circle them, beef them up, and then all of a sudden they're like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> these, they don't play no games. They know right? what they're doing. They Ridiculous. Know what they're doing. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> Horrifying. They're also uh, more close. They're the largest member of the dolphin family. Ironic. So they can eat that. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> not even dolph- a whale. <laughs> dolphins are just <laughs> jumping in the water, dolphins having a good time. Too. No, 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 no. <laughs> dolphins are. Mm-mm. Okay, no. we'll do a dolphin episode too. Yeah, I know we gotta do it. <laughs> Dolphins are mean. They are not nice. <sighs> All right. Oh, so then we have the melon headed whales, which <laughs> I exclusively picked just because their name is funny. I have never um, heard of that. They are a robust small whale <laughs> found primarily in deep tropical waters worldwide. <sighs> they are social animals and often occur in groups of hundreds or thousands. Um, and it's exactly what you think it is. Their head is like more round than the bow-headed whale. Wow. And they cute. <laughs> what a melon. It's fine. They got like a nice little <laughs> melon part on the front. Isn't um aren't those like uh beluga whales used for their echolocation or whatever, their communication? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all yep, in they the brain. do little <laughs> like that thing. <laughs> like yeah. Puma looking at the birds. <laughs> no, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it's the same thing. Pretty if you accurate. have a cat, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she do have a dome. <laughs> All right. And then we got the narwhals, which are exclusively found in the Arctic Ocean. Uh, generally, male narwhals have the big old tooth that sticks mm-hmm. out of their forehead. Um, <laughs> and it's a long clockwise spiraled tusk resembling a unicorn horn. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm just putting it out there. I think back in the day people were like oh this looks interesting and they just like <laughs> chopped it right off <laughs> and then they sold it the witches like the sell- witches. sold it <laughs> to the medieval people her and sister was like, a witch <laughs> and they're like the unicorns are real it's true they were roommates mm, they were roommates and they were roommates <laughs> My, the thing that makes me laugh though is like narwhal ocean they're like no 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 horse <laughs> I want to know where that transition I was. I don't know if that's true or not, but I hope it is. <laughs> I, just, I hope somebody in the mid- Middle Ages was like, mm, mm-hmm. I know how to make my life better. Mm-hmm. Horse horn. The plague. No, the no, no. Pl- Unicorns. It's crazy. <laughs> it's not outlandish. It Humans totally are freaking weird. I know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, rice whales are members of the baleen whale family. So not a humpback or blue whale, but they have those like mm-hmm. nice little teethies. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, they have fewer than a hundred in population currently. Oh, that's sad. Um, they are the most endangered whales in the world, which was my reasoning for including them. So save the rice whales. Must save every grain. <laughs> <laughs> no you should donate no that doesn't make any sense i was like, I was like donate rice to save the world that's not i don't think that's no. gonna help no it doesn't no nope. <sighs> um and then finally sperm whales they are the largest toothed whales um so they don't have the little bristlies yeah um yeah. they have teeth and they have one of the widest global <laughs> distributions of any marine mammal so they are everywhere think moby dick Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or Pinocchio well, whichever you want to go with oh that's true yeah mm-hmm. I forget about that I don't yeah. think I was a big pin- I watched Pinocchio as a kid I, yeah it wasn't I, my favorite no it kind of yeah. scared me honestly really yeah I, I think the that. whale thing was just not it's kind of my vibe yeah weird ironic <laughs> I know <laughs> I know I got over it clearly oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah that is that's whales for you Okay, well, I have a singular complaint about this episode. Yes. Not once in this entire episode did you make a blowhole joke. And I'm super disappointed that we have come the entire time <laughs> without a single blowhole joke. I I thought it was kind of inappropriate, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's disgusting. I, I no, don't but even know I, you I didn't anymore. Even, I didn't even think about it. It was wide open and I didn't even oh. think about it. <laughs> That's what she said. And so, (laughs) with that, we would love to know your blowhole jokes. So please send them to us at mediocrecontent at gmail.com. 
hit us up on our Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Leave us a comment. We'd love to see you. Love to hear from you. All of the good stuff. We will feature you. I, I feel like we haven't said this, but we have had a little bit of mediocre mail in the past. We'll feature your comment so long as it's appropriate, unless it's about blowholes, and then that's kind of the exception. You so just make ask them to comment on blowholes. And I now did. You're like, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> With the exception of blowhole content, make sure it's appropriate. All of that to say, please reach out to us. We will be sure to read and comment back also you can connect with us live of course same handle over on twitch every other thursday 3 p.m pst 6 p.m est 11 p.m bst pick the time zone or make one up whichever one works for you <laughs> don't forget us to rate <laughs> don't forget to rate us five stars don't forget us to rate five stars either uh wherever you listen to podcasts and we will see you next week this has been mediocre content thanks so much for listening cheers cheers, cheers.